Welcome to ASAL Community Church, where serving and giving begins. We look to the author and finisher of our faith, Jesus Christ, who demonstrated the greatest example of service and sacrifice. We believe by following his example, we can unlock the abundance of this life and be assured about our glorious, boundless future. As we gather here today, we acknowledge the power of the triune God. We offer sincere praises to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We worship and adore the maker of the heavens and earth. Indeed, we collectively affirm, we desire godly change in our lives. We are expecting God to meet us here in a mighty way. We are determined to leave this place wiser, stronger, more joyful, and equipped with biblical truth to help us conquer the week ahead. We expect God's best, leaning on him for daily direction and resolving to renew our minds and surrender our hearts through his word. We long to understand the true posture of worship, the power of earnest praise, and the blessing of hearing the word and applying it to our lives. As we look around, we realize that serving the Lord is not confined to these walls. God gathers us here for instruction, but sends us out to share the message of reconciliation. Acceptance of the shed blood of Jesus, his death, burial, and resurrection are essential to abundance in this life and the next. We are here to win souls for Christ, encourage those who do not know him personally, and build up believers to accept Christ's call and live a purpose-filled life. Everyone is welcome here at ASAL Community Church where serving and giving begins. in this place, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that dwells inside of us, Lord. Oh, Father, we came here today to give you honor, to give you praise, Lord, to give you all the glory, Lord. For you are mighty God. There is nobody like you in all the earth. Oh, hallelujah. And Lord, for your glory, oh, hallelujah. Lord, I give anything. Hallelujah. And I just ask that the Lord help me to live a life that's pleasing in his sight hallelujah 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 thank you lord for blessing me to live a life that's pleasing in your sight lord that i can see your face one day hallelujah lord if i find favor in your sight lord Please hear my heart's cry. I'm desperately waiting to be where you are. 
Across the hot test desert I'll travel near or far For your glory I will do anything Just to see you, yes To behold you as my king for your glory, I will do anything just to see you. Thank you, Jesus, to behold you as my King. Lord, if I, thank you, Jesus, find favor in your sight. Lord, please hear my heart's cry. I'm desperately waiting to be where you are. I'll cross the hottest desert. I'll travel near home for for your Hold you as my king for your glory. I will do anything just to see your face and to behold you as my king. I want to be where you are. Yes, Lord. I gotta be where you are. I wanna be where you are. I gotta be where you are. I wanna be where you are. Yeah. I gotta be where you are. I wanna Love is where you are, yes, and joy is where you are, and peace is where you are, and love is where you are, and power is where you are, Lord. Lord, we need more power. Power is where you are. I need more power. Power is where you are, Lord. Power is where you are, Lord. Power is where you are. I want to be where you are, yeah. I got to be where you are. Cause love is where you are, Lord. Hallelujah. And joy. I will do anything just to see your face, dear Father. Just to see your face, Lord. To behold you as my King. I want to be where you are. Anybody else out there want to be where the Lord is? Anybody want peace? Anybody want joy? 
Hallelujah. Anybody want power? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, saints, <laughs> if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I wouldn't be here today. I would be full of eczema all over my body, mentally, out of this world. The things that I've gone through in my life, God has kept me. Hallelujah. He's been my keeper. He's been my strength, my healer. He's been my way maker. He's been everything to me. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? Thank you, Jesus. Where would I be if it had not been? For the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? Hallelujah. Where would I be? You see, he kept my enemies away. He left the sunshine in a cloudy day. And then he wrapped me in the cradle of his arms When he knew I'd be better it's gone Oh, if it had not been Come on, clap your hands For the Lord, yes, on my side Tell me where would I I want to know where would I be, yes, if it had not been for my God on my side. Tell me where would I be, hallelujah, where would I be, say it again. You see, he kept my enemies away. He brought the sunshine on a cloudy day. And then he wrapped me in the cradle of his arms. When he knew I'd be better, it's gone. Oh, if it had not been. For the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? Where would I be? Say it again. If it had not been for the Tell me where would I be? Where would I be? Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, I praise your name, Lord. You're my Prince of Peace. You're the everlasting Father. Hallelujah. Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. Oh, hey, yeah. Hallelujah, Lord. 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, Father, thank you, Lord. This is your vessel, Lord. Oh, I thank you, Lord, for dwelling inside of me. Thank you, Lord, for using this vessel, Lord. Hallelujah. In your service, Lord. Oh, I give myself to you, Lord. Because there is nobody like you in all the, all, in all the earth. There is nobody like unto you, Lord. There is nobody like you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Father, I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. I give myself away. Mm. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Oh, I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. My life doesn't belong to me. Give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Hallelujah. Oh, I give myself away so you can use me. myself, 
I give myself to you. Hallelujah. Oh, my life is not my own. To you I belong, Lord. I give myself, I give myself to you. Hallelujah, yeah. My life is not my own. To you I belong. Oh, I give myself, I give myself, I give myself to you, Lord. Hallelujah. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself. Father God, we give ourselves away so that we can be used to the utmost for the building of your kingdom, Father. For, for what you have called us to be is disciples, to be spreaders of the word. For the word that dwells within us, Father, I just ask that you give us the utterance to share it with someone who does not know you as we do. So we're blessed, Father, blessed to have a place to come to worship you in spirit and truth, blessed to have a place to come where we can just sing the songs that give you praise. So we're thankful, Father, on this Saturday, you've allowed us to assemble here one more time to hear a word to strengthen our relationship with you. So bless us now, Father, as we move forward in this worship experience. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I am so thankful for what God is doing. For Asaw Community Church, I'm so proud of what he is doing and, and who he is using to be effective for ministry. So I'm so thankful for DeBrosia Griffin for what God has gifted her to have that she shares with us. And I'm also thankful for Mr. Gerard Black and Mr. Teddy Wright. And I'm so glad to have Teddy back from his safe travels as he traveled to Dallas to do what the Lord has called him to do also. So we're thankful. And I'm extremely thankful for the members of ASAR Community Church, the friends of ASAR Community Church, and our guests. Why? Because we should always be hospitable. Because that's what God is, is, is just calling us to do, is just to share love. Amen. Share love and to share kindness. And so if we can greet each other, I am so thankful to greet each and every one in the name of our Lord and Savior of what he has blessed us to have. And we're just thankful that you would come out and be a part of that with us. And with that being said, uh, i just like to just get into the word tonight, if y'all don't mind. I, I, you know, sometimes I have little notes and some things that I want to, to share. But tonight, I just want to jump into the word because every day is getting closer. Every day is getting closer. Every day. Last week, we started the sermon called Every Day is Getting Closer, and it's found in Romans, the 13th chapter, and I looked at verses 8 and 11 through 14, and tonight, we're going to finish up with verses 12, 13, and 14. So last week, I said that would be part two, and I will conclude part, I mean, that would be part one, and tonight, we will conclude part two. So that's Romans chapter 13. We're going to read verses 8, then we're going to skip down and read verses 11 through 14. Romans 13, 8 starts by saying, Owe no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. And we talked about that. And we talked about owing no one anything other than love. That is the only debt we take to the grave with us. Debt that you may have accumulated that you can handle or you can pay, it's fine. It's the debt that you can't that wears you down. And when you are weighted down from things, it, it makes you ineffective in ministry because those things are on your mind. So it says, oh, no one except to love one another. 
For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. And then we went down to verse number 11. It says, and do this knowing the time that now it's high time to awake out of sleep, for now our salvation is nearer than we first believed. And we talked about that, and we, we expressed about it's time to stop sleeping and, 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 and wake up and realize where you are in the kingdom and, and what's effective. And, and so we talked about those things because it is paramount for us to be standing on a solid foundation. Our lives, our ministry has to be a, a, a founded or, or, or planted firmly on the foundation of truth that comes out of the word. And so tonight we're just going to look at the last three so that when we put it all together, we can truly understand what was Paul trying to convey to the people of that period or that day that still is relevant today. So verse number 12 says, the night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and have no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. How many people understand that every day is getting closer to something? E every day is getting closer to, to something. And, and sometimes in your life, if you are truly paying attention, the Lord will send you signs for you to be aware. There, there are signs. There, there are signs that, that, that God will send to you to get your attention when he can't get your attention attention he'll send some signs he will he will because he wants you to be effective he wants you to have a glorious life it should be a a, a wonderful a wonderful time in the lord if you know him but yet so many people that profess they have salvation live depressed lives and I wonder why. I, I mean, how, how can you live a life like that when the, all the word sh shares and gives is the joy and the hope and the righteousness of our, our faith? And, and we talked about several weeks ago that the lack comes from you. So when you look at the word, you have to figure out where to apply it in your life. Where should it resonate with you? There is something in every message, in every scripture for you. It's just, you got to just figure out where, where, where to place it. Where to place it. So, so starting at verse 12, it says, The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of life. Put on the armor of life. So it, it starts off with the night is far spent, the day is at hand. So, so again, if, if we operate in love, it will defeat all the words that live in darkness. If, if we operate in love. If, if we, we can confess it, but if we really operate in, in, in love, it defeats all the words that live and exist in darkness. Love, love trumps envy and jealousy and pride and, and so many other negative words. Love trumps that, but, but we must, you and I, must operate in it. So whatever you hear, you should apply love to your reply. Whatever you hear, whatever it comes into your ear gate, uh, if you would just, just put a sprinkle of love on it, I guarantee you that your reply would be different. I mean, because we all have a sin nature, and, and all of us have the ability to go there. It's in there, because we all came from there to get here. So, so it's not like we don't know, but if we uh, confess, if we profess, then, then, then we have to temper our responses with, with love to change the reply. So it says the night is almost gone and the day of salvation will soon be, be here. I, I know I've been hearing that since I was a kid. My, my grandmother said soon and very soon. But you have to 
understand the light because if you can't understand the light, then you are living in darkness. It's, it's either or. You're either part of the light or you're, you're, you're part of the darkness. And some people can't grow because they claim to be light, but deep down they hold on to darkness. I know it's nobody here. I'm just saying there are some people that live like that. They, they profess one thing, but they hold on to darkness. And, and Paul is telling them, listen, the night is far spent, but, but the day is at hand. In other words, today is the day for salvation. Tomorrow is not promised to no man. So Paul is just telling them the same thing I'm sharing with you. Cast off. Cast off these works of darkness and, and, and prepare to enjoy and bask in the light because the two can't exist. See, see the reason why Paul was so adamant about sharing the, 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 the distinguishing factors between darkness and light is because in his particular period, people were uh, uh, pagan worshiping and, and, and but, but, but they did it at night. We, we do things at night that we don't do in the daytime. We do. I, I, I don't know about y'all, but when I was in the world, there was a song that called The Freaks Come Out at Night. That's when they came out. That's when all the weird stuff happened was at night. Even Richard Pryor said nothing happens till 1130. 11.30. And he had to be home by midnight. And bring... <laughs> But we understand that, 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 that things happen at night. But, but I want you to know that light trumps darkness. And the light is the, the word of God. It's the gospel. And, 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 and night, although you may think you are having a wonderful time, it's going to be short-lived. Because if you're not a part of light, darkness is your eternal destination. The gospel, the word of God exists for everyone to come closer because each day that you put it off, you're getting closer. So I would advise you to take heed of the word of God now while you are able. So Paul says the night is far spent. What does far spent mean? Well, far spent, far spent is just simply cut off, short, hasten to a close. Cut off. You, you know, I, I, you, maybe I should just make it very simple. Sometimes in relationships, when women get tired of men, they say, I'm just cutting that joke off. That means no more communication. She has, that, that's, the, that's far spent. That's it. Over. That's, that's no more. <laughs> that's it. Uh, that meal you used to get when you come up, that, that's gone. That's done. She, she has cut it off. But, but we should be motivated because every day we're getting closer. See, that's the beautiful thing about life. Every day we're getting closer to some type of destination. And I'm here to encourage you that if you understand light, it is just a joyous ride to the end. But if you don't, if you don't know them, then, then if you don't know them, then, then, then darkness is, 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 is where you reside, is where you are comfortable, and this change to light could be perplexing, but I guarantee you that it's not. It's just nothing more than a confession and submission and enjoying the journey because God wants you to be joyous. So it says that the day is at hand. The day when there will be no more sleep. Have you ever thought about that? Like you think about it. We, we think about heaven and, and we, can, we, we picture it in our mind but we, but we don't really know. But, but, but here's the thing that when we get to heaven there is no more darkness. It can't be darkness where there is light. They can't coexist. So when you get to heaven, it's nothing but a state of joyous splendor of light. Because he's the father. I, I, I can't, I mean, even though we trying to make this, 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 this pulpit uh, um, um, wonderful with a array of light, it's nothing compared to. See, remember in verse 11, it said, high time to awake out of sleep, for now our salvation is nearer today than when we first confessed. Each day on this journey, we are drawing closer to that day 
that day, that, that reward, that inheritance. It's not, it shouldn't be a sad day. It's going to be sad for some people who don't know your destination. It's definitely sad for them. But for those who, who know your destination, they're, 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 they have that expected end to it. It's just that you're probably going to get there before us and enjoy it while we're still waiting to, to get there. So it's a joyous, as we say in our welcome, it's a joyous, boundless future that's wrapped up in eternal blessings. Mm. The day of judgment is coming soon. You, you know, you say that and people go, ooh. That, does, that sounds harsh, doesn't it? The day of judgment is coming soon. Every day we're getting closer to the, ooh. It, 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 it's it's kind of, it doesn't, it, it's not as exciting but the destination is the best place to end up. But yet when you hear that, they go, ooh, that, that's scary that the judgment is near. Well, if, if you're on this journey and you are working and as they say, pressing to the mark, well, when you get to the mark, that's the joyous reward for the work that you've done. It, that, that should be the exciting part. That's the part that we should be excited about. But non-believers should be fearful of those statements because they are walking in the darkness and you should be excited because you're walking in the marvelous light when I was a kid the older people in my church used to always say doing testimony pray for me as I pray for you but I'm going to run on to see what the end will be because they knew they knew they knew they knew also in verse number 12, it says, therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the, old, the armor of light. Because of all that light has to offer, you should cast off darkness. Because think about it now, if we live as Christ would like for us to live, Knowing and embracing the, the eternal glory. Think about that. If we live as Christ would like, the reason why he came, if he lives, if he lives in you, then you should want to live like him. Glory is the end game. That's the end game. So he says cast off. So if you're going to cast off something, then you have to put on something. So in order to put on something new, you have to take off something Oh, See how the word works? See how it works? It, it, it doesn't leave you stagnant. It doesn't leave you wondering what you should do. It gives you the instructions. It says, therefore, cast off the works of darkness. So you have to take off something old. So how you used to be is no longer how you are. Is that correct? Thing? How you used to be is no longer how you are or no longer how you is or no how long ago. Whatever it is, it should not be the same. How about that? Let's just do that. It should not be the same because you are casting off and now you are made new. So we should all who have cast off darkness live in purity, seeking pureness of life and cast off or lay aside or put away those things that contribute to the darkness. So to get what, or to get where we confess and believe we are going, we have to do some things in our lives that represent the new destination. In other words, there are people who profess one thing, say that they are of light, but they, they live in darkness. They do. And you've, you've, you've met them, you've, you've questioned them, you've, you've tried to understand it, but, but, but it's not our responsibility to judge them. Our responsibility is to be the best example we can be and share the word of God, share the word of truth. How do you know there are people who profess light but live in darkness? Well, here's how you can tell there are people who, who say they are of light but still live in darkness. Well, they're shacking right now. They're shacking. They're just living together. They're not married. Or they're part of the same sex and enjoying in that relationship because society said you can't. That's living in darkness. If you are participating in that, and, and I'm not going to let nobody be exempt, so if you are an adulterer or a fornicator, you are in the same group of darkness. Yeah, 
Because, see, most people always want to uh, uh, talk about the same sex people, but they are doing the same thing, just with different people, but same thing. It's still sin. It's still sin. It's still sin. It's still part of the darkness. And, and, and you profess light, but somewhere along the line, you got to let your light and your life line up. That's what it says here. It says, uh, therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness. And then it goes on to tell us to, to, to put on, put on the armor of light. But, but that darkness, that darkness, man, sometimes it has you because it's some wicked, it's some wicked deeds, man. And, and it's, some, it's some places that you go in the dark that, that you're just comfortable. I was talking to a friend of mine and he was, he was telling me, he said, man, how, 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 how is it that, you know, that this, 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 this salvation, man, it just seems like there, there is no fun in it. You know, what I'm doing is fun. And I said, enjoy yourself. That's what I told him. I said, I, just enjoy yourself, but it, it's, it's temporary. It's, te it's temporary. It's temporary. I said, see, see, we can count how long we may be here. And there is a number. You can say, well, if I, Lord bless me to get to 85. Well, let's say 70. If I, I say, Lord, let me get to 70. And then I think about it. I'm, I'm, I'll be 58 in June. That's, that's just 12 years away. So do I want to really risk 12 years for eternity? Do I want to just risk a little good time right now hanging with my boys versus eternity? And that's what I told him. I said, look, man, I'm not, I don't, I don't, I'm not one of those people that, that, that pushes that religion on you or gospel or turn and burn and, and what you were doing because I remember that I wasn't always saved. So I just told him, I said, listen, you have some choices to make in life. And I pray that you make a choice that allows you to see the light, to, to, to be, realize that there's more excitement in light than in darkness. But he said, therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness. And so Paul has used these metaphors throughout the chapter to just show you the difference. There's night and there's day, there's sleep and awake, there's darkness and light. And I love it because I look at life that way. Look at life, simp the simplicity of life is just pick a road, either or, left or right. Either you're saved or you're unsaved. You either like them or you don't. It's, it's a simple thing. We, we vacillate between the two, trying to make it more difficult than what it is. Either you're showing up or you're not. It's very simple in life. Either you're going to do it or you're not. That's it. That's life. So he, he tells us, he tells us that every day we're getting closer. He reminds us that we need to love one another and the only debt we have to one another is to love. And he tells us to be respectful. He tells us to be honorable. He tells us to be everything that represents God in a world that despises the word. That's our responsibility. And you might think that it's a lot. It is for those who don't believe. But if you believe, you know your assignment, you know your job, because why, how, why, how? Well, it's right here in verse number, the rest of verse number 12. It says, and let us put on the armor of light. It's, it doesn't say just put light on. It calls light armor. It says put on the armor. If you know anything about the old days when they would have knights, knights would dress up in armor. And it would be an armor from head to toe. Why? Because they were trying to protect themselves from the defense of the other person dressed up just like them. And the strategy was to be able to get your weapon into an area that was vulnerable to destroy your opponent. But you put on armor. So, so Paul is telling us, and he's telling them, because whenever you write, you want to write in the language that is indicative of the time, and he says to them, let us clothe ourselves with armor. Why? So that that armor that we clothe ourselves with will defend us from the enemy. That armor will defend us from the darkness. Why? Because that armor represents light. And light is a shield to protect yourself from the battlefield. 
It's a beautiful thing when you can see the enemy. And God is saying, if you put me on, I will defeat the enemy on your behalf. All you have to do is trust in me. Why? Because the word of God says, I will defeat the foe. All you have to do is stand back, call out, and watch. But no, we still jump in because darkness sometimes still has a grip on us. Even though we know this, even though we know that the word protects us from a world that despises us, we still sometimes, we, we just need to be reminded every once in a while of whose we are and where we are. Why? Because again, it's your faith, it's your knowledge and understanding of him. You have to get more involved in the word so that you are rooted and saturated knowing that you are protected. So he tells them, let us, that's all of us. He don't say let me, he don't say let just the pastor, he let, let us, everybody, put on the armor of life. That is a shield to protect yourself in battle. So when you take off something, when you cast off something, you have to put on something new. So he says, cast off the darkness and put on the light. The light prepares you for the endurance in the battle. So you have to have a defense mechanism. Every time you go into any type of situation, there's an offense and a defense, and you have to be prepared for whatever plays the offense is going to run. This is the only battle where all you have to do is stand with the shield of faith on and God does the fighting for you. It says by his words, by his stripes, by him we are everything that we desire to be. It's because of him. Every truth, every righteousness, faith hope all of these things God uses to defeat the enemy because the enemy can't deal with truth when do you have the most arguments in your marriage when you bring up truth how do you know you bring up truth because immediately upon bringing up truth the other person will go back into the archives and remind you of something you did yeah okay I know. And it's not happening in this congregation, the other congregation. I'm just saying there's something about that. That, that truth defeats the enemy. When truth comes, enemies want to flee. So when you battle, you have to have the proper tools to defeat the enemy. And if you put on that whole armor of light, you are protected from head to toe. So if you take off something and put on something new, that's a change. If you take off something, put on something new, that's a change. But if you take off something and don't put nothing on, you're naked. And I'm encouraging you, stop walking around naked. Stop trying to keep feet in both sides. You want to be in darkness with one side of your family, and you want to be light on the other side. I'm telling you to pick a road. But if you pick a road of light, not only will you not be naked, but some of them naked folks will get covered up too. So we are representation of the children of light. And every enemy that tries to attack you is trying their best to attack your faith. Hmm. So what, what does evil need to be replaced with? Well, evil needs to be replaced with righteousness. So let our works reflect the light and that light will repel all of that nonsense. And sometimes you got to figure out that when you're going through some nonsense, what light are you shining? Because <laughs> I'm telling you, man, all of this, all that we endure comes from us. All that we do endure comes from our choices, the path that we are on. So I'm just trying to get you on the path that is, that is straight. I'm trying to get you on the path that you don't have to have all these. I don't want you to ever wake up agonizing about the day. You never wake up agonizing about the day. Every day that you wake up should be joyous. The reason why you agonize is not because of God, it's because of some choices that you made. So, Paul says in verse number 13, after he shares all of this, after he shares all, he gets down to 13 and he says, let us walk properly as in the day. Let us walk. Again, this is inclusive of everybody. Now, the latter part, y'all know me. I, I, I don't preach all this negative stuff. You know why? Because you ain't got to preach stuff that's already there. So, so, so let me just skip to the, the B part of that verse. It says, not in reverie and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in, I, I ain't got to, y'all know what that is. 
Y'all know what that is. And some people not only know what it is, they're living in it right now. There's some people right now that are Christian that's living in jealousy and envy every single day. They can't get out of their way because they're envious and jealous of the moves you make. I don't know why you upset or, or envious of the moves I make. If whatever move I make, God allowed it to happen. So you shouldn't even be mad at me. You should be mad at him. I'm just blessed and well to receive it. So since we got that out of the way, because I ain't dealing with that because it's self-explanatory, let's just go back to the first part of that. It says, let us walk properly as in the day. Basically, all Paul is telling them, let us put on Christian behavior as we move about. Let us walk. Let us walk. Let us live. Let us live and conduct ourselves representing him. Let us walk properly as in the day. Jesus walked in his day and he was not ashamed because he came, what? To do an assignment and everywhere he walked, he was an example of how we ought to live in our lives so he's just telling us to let us walk properly as in the day because we don't really need to be a part of the night why because everywhere we go we're light so when we walk to a place that is dark soon as we get there it lights up why because the spirit of God that is on you comes with the light so therefore since the two can't coexist and since I am light that means even if it's dark outside wherever I tread light is going to be there because I'm the example I'm the representation of Christ why because I am walking properly as in the day then we get down to verse 14 it says but put on the Lord Jesus Christ he then defines how you're supposed to be walking and he's always repetitive why do you have to keep repeating yourself because sometimes we don't get it the first time so sometimes you got to hear it again and again and again and you don't believe it or begin to believe it until you have heard it over and over over and over again and it saturates but it has to saturate in your heart why he tells you put on the Lord Jesus Christ why because people are looking for an example people are looking to see that Christ exists people are looking because even though they think they're caught up in their folly darkness is at hand it is coming to an end and if you don't believe it look at the obituary every hour on the hour somebody is coming to their end so I'm encouraging why you have strength in your body lungs to breathe and to push out of your body let your life be the example keep walking and don't owe no man nothing but to love him God bless you and may heaven smile upon you Put on, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's your profession. People are looking at you and you should, you should live by your confession. To be clothed is a Greek phrase that means you assuming the interest of another you're imitating or expressing their view so we just want to be clothed to express the views of as Paul says right here in chapter uh, verse 14 the Lord Jesus Christ the doors of the church are open to someone who may be seeking a a home and not just a church no, 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 no. You shouldn't join just to be joining the church. You should be joining because of the word that has been preached and taught. And you can see the difference in your life. You can see the difference in your life. That's what the word is supposed to do. Every church that I have been a member of in my life, I have never left on bad terms. Because I never joined for no other reason than the word that was being preached and where I was able to apply it in my life. And so when I felt the shift, either I had outgrown, grew up, or was no longer being fed, I, I went someplace else. Nobody keeps going to a restaurant and the food is bad. <laughs> Every Tuesday at seven o'clock, we have our Bible study. We call it Tuesday Town Hall because our Bible study is just a little bit different. It's Bible study, but it's town hall style. What does that mean? It means that we have topics and we discuss them and people can openly 
share because I believe I believe you learn better when you share your experience because then you can take your experience and attach that scripture to your experience so that now when you go forward you not only have a story but you have a scripture to back up the story that's what comes from town hall now Bible study where you get some scriptures and you, and you talk about them or you, you, know, you learn about them but, but, but where's the application? That's what, that's what I'm concerned with. I'm concerned with the application because when you're talking to someone, you're talking to them uh, in a conversation form. So I want the, the scriptures to be like in a conversation. That's, that's what we do here at ASAW. That's what we do. So it's every Tuesday at 7 o'clock. I'll be in town this week, Lord willing. So I'll be right here, and, but you can catch us online. And if you're interested in that, reach out to us, and we'll make sure that you have that information. When it comes to giving here at Asar Community Church, we believe what it says in 2 Corinthians. Sow sparingly, reap sparingly. Sow bountifully, reap bountifully. God is looking at your heart, what you give based upon what he's done for you. That's what you give. You can call it whatever you want. You can call it. It's up to you and the Lord. The woman who gave the two bits, Jesus was there. And she, he said to everybody, she gave more than all of y'all. Because y'all gave out of your abundance. And it's always easy to give when you have a whole bunch. But man, you got to trust God when you're down to the last. And she gave all that she had. So when it comes to giving, if you're here, you can fill out the envelope and place it in the containers at the end of the service. Or you can go to asawcc.org and give online, which I prefer because it makes everything so more efficient. You get your statements at the end of the year. We can track it if you have a problem. There's someone I can call. So it's a blessing. It's a blessing. And it's a service that we pay for, for your convenience, for your convenience and accountability. I'm always about accountability. So with that being said and done, I want to um, uh, pray for Roger and Gloria who are traveling. They're on vacation. I want them to enjoy themselves. I've been praying for Karen's son. He's now home recovering. Karen called me and said she's having some aches and pains and she wouldn't be here tonight, but she would be praying for us. So we are praying for her and Sister Terrell will close us out in prayer. Father God, we give you glory. We give you praise on this evening. Father God, we thank you for the worship. We thank you for the praise that went forth, Father God. Lord, we thank you for your word, Father God, that went forth, Father God. Continue, Father God, that everything that Pastor poured out on today, Father God, just fill him back up, Father God, with your anointing, Father God. Fill him back up with your word, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we just give you praise tonight. Be with us as we go back home. Give us traveling grace and mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.